We've animated camera moves, but we can make more complex animations by moving, rotating, and hiding components of a design. To do this, your model does need to be broken up into components. A design of any complexity in Fusion 360 should be built from components, and you can see that the example file is organized into components and even subcomponents. In a large model, it can sometimes be hard to identify specific components that you want to translate. If you're looking for a specific component, you can hover or click on its name in the browser to highlight it on the canvas. This is useful if you're trying to select a component that's buried in the middle of the model. The opposite works as well. Clicking a component on the canvas highlights it in the browser. This can be useful if you have component names that aren't very descriptive. A nice way of being able to quickly differentiate between components is to turn on component color cycling. Press the N key. This is the same as in the model workspace, but here in the animation workspace we don't have the command for it in the toolbar, just the keyboard shortcut. Well, we've mostly ignored the toolbar until now, so let's take a look at how some of its commands can help us with the task of animating components. The transform components command is the most basic and really the most useful. I'll demonstrate how to use it by starting out the same way that I start any animation. Move to the scratch zone and set up the scene. Just as I did in the camera moves that I created earlier, I'll start by moving the cursor to the time at which I'd like this action to end. Three seconds. Now I'd like to show in this animation how the nut is removed from this assembly. I'll click on that component, either from the browser or on the model directly. Click the Transform Components icon. You'll see that it's possible to use any manner of translation or rotation on this component. I'll drag it off the axle by 50 millimeters and choose OK. As you can see, a new row is created in the left side of the timeline, and the new action appears along with a little icon to identify it as a move. Let's add another action to the same component. Again, I can choose that component from the browser in the canvas, or now I have another way to select it, by clicking its row in the timeline. I'll choose the Transform Components icon again, and this time I won't move it, I'll only rotate it. I can do that by using the triad, and I'll drag it to about 200 degrees. I can also type a value in the field here, or back in the window. Play it back, and you can see that it does both actions at the same time. Notice that there's still only one row for this component. It's just grown vertically to accommodate the new action. It's easy to edit these actions by dragging them around in the timeline. I can change the duration, or I can move it. Maybe I'd like the rotating to occur only at the very beginning of the movement. You can also change the timing by right-clicking and choosing either Edit Start End or Duration. I'll make the rotation a bit longer. Choosing Edit Action allows you to adjust the actual transformation. I'll move the nut by 100 millimeters instead of the 50 I originally entered. Of course you can see that it seems to move faster, and it is. It's because it still has the same duration, but it has more distance to move in that time. 